Hi, hello everybody. Today, Ayanna is going to be the cameraman and I'm on the camera because she, she wanted to switch it up a little bit because she's tired of always being in front of the camera, she said. So anyway, I want to talk about the new Defender because for the last couple of days I've been driving it around and testing it out. Um, originally, I'm not a big Defender fan. I know Land Rover fans or, you know, Defender is like the image of Land Rover and I, I never really cared much for the original Defender. I mean, it's a great car, don't get me wrong. It's for, you know, safari, off-road, all that stuff. But I just, you know, the squareness, and I'm more of like a Range Rover sport. I love Range Rovers, so Defender was never appealing to me. But the new Defender, I've got to be honest, I love it. It's a great car. I mean, the size, this is a 110. This is a 110. There's a 90 and a 110. The 90, of course, is a little more shorter, but the 110 is 10 fits like seven-seater. And uh, two in the front, three in the middle, two in the back. Size-wise, for Japan, it's a little big, of course, as a 110, but it, it isn't that, like, inconvenient. It's, it's actually not bad at all. Uh, so you have a lot of options. We'll grab this. So for off-roading and stuff, this thing has a lot of options. Usually there's a, you can do it by, a, like, a, what do you call it, extended air filter that goes up here. So... Pretty much you can go underwater, because as long as the engines get air, it's gonna keep running. And it's built airtight, so there's no issue there. So if you get that like off-road air extended filter or uh, intake thing, then you can go pretty much underwater. They have uh, side steps at the bottom that you can put on down here, so it's easier to step in because it can raise up pretty high. And uh, on the side, you have like uh, compartments, little, uh, cases so you can put things in it uh, tools kits tow ropes whatever you know off-roading stuff and then uh, the back you have your your spare tire so you have your spare tire and then the the back when the seats are down of course there's a lot more space here you have a charging thing so for like when i'm droning you can take this out charge it and stuff like that you have charging ports here as well you have the raise and lower the car so when you're putting stuff in there's a lot of space you have your air conditioning control for back here for the people who are sitting back here you even have little skylights up here some more can like probably air related things I guess I've never sat back here so I can't really say too much but there's a lot of space as you can see and it's really built for that off-road easy to clean type stuff because all this matte stuff is easy to wipe down so if you go off-roading or camping you can uh, clean it easily Little hooks and stuff for probably hanging wire strings closed. Door is a little heavy, so but that just means it's tough. For the most part, that's the outside of the car. Uh, you can get some racks and stuff for the top, but it's a great car. It's, it really it actually drives very smoothly. It's not like what I was expecting, like kind of bumpy and stuff. It's, it's just like driving in a Range Rover, any luxury car, but it's made for more off-road. So we'll go to the inside next. So we'll check out the inside. Okay. So now we're in the car, we're gonna turn it on. And yeah, as you can hear the sound, I mean, there's no loud sound from the engine. The air condition is going to be blowing hard because I had it turned because it's hot today. Oh my God. So try to turn the air so you don't get that blasting. So this is the inside of the car. It's extremely simple. I mean, you have your shifter, your air condition controls, your raising and lowering the car for like off-road, on-road, your, air, you know, more of your air condition controls, the recycle air. Oops, oops. Sorry, turn this down, hold on, hold on. Your, it's a little few off-road things, but something that's, you know, kind of cool with this control panel. You have your Navi, which is typical. Let me see, uh, I don't want to, my phone's unplugged. So you have your typical Navi stuff. You have your navigation, your phone controls, your radios. You can push here and you have your other accounts for each person. I'm sure you can set the car up per person climate control cameras for around the car so when you're driving off-road or if you're just parking valet mode valet mode i think locks these kind of things these glove boxes and stuff so when you park your car valets can't get into it echo data four by four will be of course any kind of four four by four information i understand and then you can go through the it tells you what each mode of the car is and how it works and how to configure it wade sensory and stuff so 
I don't want to mess with any of that stuff. Oops. Uh, wade sensing is, of course, when you go in the water, you know, let you know how high up the car is. Low traction launch is when you're in the snow or you're in like sand or whatever, and you need to get out, but you, you don't want your tires to spin. Car dimensions, vehicle dimensions, that tells you so you know exactly from height lowering. And then uh, voice controls, because you can control certain things, call so-and-so, call mom, navigation, and then phone. So that's your basics. So if you connect your phone, say your iPhone, then you can go to CarPlay. Hold on a second. I've never... Oh, well, uh, so then it goes to CarPlay, and then you have... You can use your cell phones, Navi, you can use your apps, your Spotify, your phone, you know, things like that. And you can use either one, which is great. So if you don't like their car's Navi system, you want to use your phone, Navi, you can do that fine. And you can control it and you have all your calendar and stuff. So it's really, really good. So that's just convenient stuff. Now back to the, the car setting. See, there's a button right here that lets you choose the setting of the car. Right now it's comfort. Echo is, of course, you know, probably with exhaust and stuff. Grass and gravel is grass and gravel if you're in the zone and you want to, like, kind of telling you about the tracking and stuff like the launch. Mud ruts is for muddy sand if you're hitting the desert. Rock crawl, so when you go in, so it probably, in each, each mode that you select, it lowers and raises and sets the, uh, the car different ways. Wading in the water and then, you know, you can make it configurable. So when you set one of these, it automatically adjusts the car. It, when you set one of those, it automatically adjusts, adjusts the cars so that it's for that, that terrain. So rock crawling, it'll make the suspension harder or however softer, I don't know which one. And it'll, it'll make all four wheels, like four-wheel drive. Certain other ones won't make it four-wheel drive. It'll be individual wheels probably. And the Land Rover is really good. Range Rover and Land Rover is really good about like, if one tire is spinning, it won't put the power to that tire. It'll just stop that tire's power and put the that power the power, the torque to that tire to the other three tires that are catching. So it's pretty good about that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, other convenient stuff, you have charging ports here. You got a charging point here. You have some charging ports down here. And this is a C port, which is new. Uh, most cars is just USB, but this is C. And since I use Android, this is useful for me, C to C. And uh, the steering wheel. We'll go up here to the steering wheel. Very simple. We have your basic uh, cruise control settings over here. You have your stereo, radio, uh, volume, your phone, voice controls, skip tracks, and then your speedometer, speed dial, your trip summary. It's just simple. You know, wipers, blinkers, and then you have your rear view mirror. So if you flip the switch, it'll go to the camera in the back. So if you have too much stuff in the back seat, you can always use the camera. And you can see out the back. And then your sunglass holder. There is no sunroof in this one, but that's the, the gist of it. And uh, so, I mean, the back seats, of course, a lot of space. But that's the Defender. Like I said, I was never a big Defender guy, but after driving this for a couple days, I love this car. I think it's an amazing car. Price-wise, it's great. And uh, when you're driving it, you feel like you can just go anywhere. I mean, you feel unstoppable. It's, it's the height, the power the build of it, the quality. It's highly recommend this car. Of course, you know, I heard they're popular, so, you know, it's hard to get your hands on one right now, but if you want one, I would definitely go to a dealer and try to get put your name on the, the order list as soon as possible. And things like this as well, like uh, since it's an off-road vehicle, everything here is just durable and easy to clean. Sand, dirt, mud, you can just take it and clean it. There, It's got your refrigerator like things in here your cup holders all this stuff comes out all this stuff is rubber so it's got a little hole here for your grip it's got hand grips like this I guess if the driver gets scary with the passenger can grip yeah grab it show them so it's just a grip I mean this car is made for off-road but it's also made for city life so that's my review on the uh the Defender. It's a great car. Definitely uh, check it out if you get a chance. And uh, I hope Ayanna did a good job as a camera person, because if not, I have to do a lot of editing later. So we'll see. All right. Thanks for watching Ayanna's 
camera editing or camera work video. All right, thank you. Bye.